Welcome back to Wildlife Weekly News. I'm your host, Jared Morse, and this is my slow host, Craig the Three-Toed Sloth, and today we're going to travel the world through animal encounters. So let's get wild. So if anyone knows how to make a cool audio or like change this so it's not my creepy little voice, please send me a message because I need help. Wildlife Weekly. Wildlife Weekly News. Today, as always, we have some superb animal encounters. And first, we're going to start off in Africa, hearing from Jeffrey with some big cats. Then we're going to head over to Emma and learn a couple new ways to live a more sustainable life. Then, of course, our fan favorite, heading to the Backyard Finds, where you, the viewers at home, found some animals in their backyards. And we're going to wrap things up with Nature Nerd Nick and his incredible narration of a time he encountered some animals. So, let's head to Africa. And here we are in Africa. Who knew it would only take us seconds? This first video is of a male lion crossing probably a large plane. I think it's a really, really cool shot. For the next video, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to let you listen to this lioness, and you'll hear why. Check out these amazing pictures Jeffrey took. And if you want more, you should definitely go check him out on Instagram at g.ellis underscore photography. And you'll see that on the screen right now. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for the amazing lion encounter. I'm sure we'll be hearing from Jeffrey more in the future. Craig, what'd you think of that one? Super. Grab your reusable cup and let's head over to Emma and hear some great sustainable tips. Hi guys, my name is Emma and I run the Instagram account growing.sustainably. This Instagram account kind of came about when I was living in Australia for a year. I just started to live more eco-friendly and I was also living out of a backpack. So I kind of felt the need to share my minimalist journey and my journey to living more sustainably and eco-friendly. So I guess I'm going to share a few tips with you just how to start out living more sustainably in your life. So tip number one, I would say, is to start small on your journey to living more eco-friendly. Because the more that you try to do all at once, the more overwhelming it is. And I feel like that's kind of when the dropout starts happening where you're like, you know what, never mind. Like, it's just too much. I can't handle it. Uh, I can't remember my grocery bags all the time while at the same time bringing my reusable cup and my reusable napkin and all this stuff. So just like think of one thing that you want to change maybe every month, every two weeks, whenever your time frame is. Um, so, and just like work on that one thing. Like maybe that's just bringing your own bag to the grocery store or always remembering your reusable cup when you are going out to get coffee. And you know, that could just be like setting a reminder on your phone or something like that. Um, so it's just about forming habits. So doing it, doing everything at once and trying to just be like the super eco-friendly person overnight is not going to help you form the habits. So I guess that's my first tip is just start small, don't get overwhelmed, do your best and yeah, live eco-friendly. Okay, tip number two is to kind of do an audit of your life. I know it sounds kind of weird, but like think about all the things that you use on a daily basis and think about how sustainable or eco-friendly it is and how you could change that. So maybe for example, let's see, shampoo. Everyone uses, I mean most people, use shampoo and conditioner. Um, you're using, use, most of the time it's in a plastic bottle. You use it up in a few months, you throw the bottle away. Um, sometimes the bottles can be recycled, but most of the time people don't even do that. Cause it's, and also they're not properly recycling them. So you can think about like, how can you make a swap with just that one item? So there's refillable shampoo and conditioner, there's shampoo and conditioner bars. There's also people in this world that literally don't wash their hair. Um, it's a thing, look it up. <laughs> I do wash my hair, I use a shampoo bar, but like that's one thing that I, I've been able to switch. And there's things all around your house that you could probably swap to something a little more eco-friendly, at least maybe more recyclable or reusable after the product is done. So yeah, that's, that's one thing. It's just 
kind of audit your life, things in the kitchen, things in the bathroom, things in your bedroom, like what can you make more eco-friendly and maybe swap for like plastic free version. Thank you so much, Emma, for those tips. I'm going to start practicing some of those because it's just an easy way to be sustainable. Let's hear what our fan thinks about that one. He really likes it. Now it's time to grab our muck boots and head to the backyard for Backyard Finds. Dooba doo doo Backyard Finds. Starting off our Backyard Finds is my cousin Shay. This is a turtle hatchling. Again, another picture of a turtle, but this one was from Joe Lee. And this turtle was laying her eggs. And then another turtle from Lexi. This turtle was trying to cross the road, so she helped her out. The last turtle in our series today is from my cousin Emily and my Aunt Lori. Look at how big this snapping turtle is. What a behemoth. Aw, look at this little fawn. This was found by my Aunt Lori on her bike ride. Then we have some deer from Caitlin when she was on her drive. Next we have Hiker Jay, and he found a fawn in his grass. Hiker Jay is an outdoor YouTuber and gear review guru, so you should definitely go check him out. Our last deer segment is from Katie and Sedona on their daily walk. Check out this pair of osprey that my little sister Lauren found on our lake. And lastly, we have Sydney with a toad, but it's in her basement. Not necessarily the backyard, but still a super cool find. Wow, way to go my friends. Keep sending submissions. I love seeing everybody getting outside and showing the amazing encounters with animals. Let's see what my little creatures had to say about that one. Yay! For our last segment, I want you to close your eyes until you hear this noise. After you hear that noise, open your eyes and see the awesome pictures that Nature Nerd Nick got of these creatures. But for now, keep those eyes closed and just listen to his story. So basically, it had been a very long winter. My primary focus with my research is herpetofauna. I'm looking at the effects of ecological restoration on sensitive herpetological populations. Therefore, long, cold winters basically mean no plants and no reptiles or amphibians. I needed to branch out. I recently had purchased a camera and was learning the basics of how to take pictures of wildlife. I had just gotten a new lens and was eager to test it out on the only active animals I could find, which were fur bearers. I had been lucky enough to get a semi-decent picture of a mink at one spot and wanted to see if I could get another encounter with a little mustelid. Unfortunately for me, no such luck. I sat for about 30 minutes before I decided I'd better move to a new spot. As I was leaving, however, I heard something hit the leaves behind me. My first thought was that it was a squirrel dropping an acorn, but I decided to turn around anyway. Behind me on the ground, the leaf litter was speckled white. I quickly looked up and about 100 feet above me I could see a nest about a foot in diameter. Still new to birds, I thought yeah, it was probably a hawk nest given the size and was eager to get a shot of the babies as they move towards the edge of the nest to evacuate themselves so that it stays clean. A half hour of waiting and only seeing small fluffy movements, I decided I was the one who probably needed to move. Luckily, a large oak tree had fallen nearby and I was able to scale it about 30 feet up. Much to my surprise, when I looked through the viewfinder, I saw two bright yellow eyes staring back at me. Owls. I whispered excitedly to myself, almost losing my footing and falling off the precarious perch. Over the next few weeks, I cautiously watched the nest from afar, making sure not to disturb the family of great horned owls I had slowly become acquainted with. In northern Illinois, not much in the way of natural areas are left, so this remnant oak woodland that I manage and restore is a perfect home for a family of five to hunt and grow unnoticed. I watched the owls go from tiny little fuzz butts to fully grown fledglings, beginning to branch in a matter of weeks. I knew that they would begin to take flight and become apex predators of the sky soon. I was eager to see if they would all make it, as a family of three baby owls isn't necessarily successful. I went back one day, anxiously awaiting to see if all three were branching. But when I arrived at my secret spot, I felt heartbroken. Trash was thrown everywhere, a makeshift bridge and fort had been built under the nesting site, and worse still, large dog footprints were all about the forest floor, and the owls had disappeared. I dismantled the fort and bridge and eventually found the perpetrators, two young kids who I politely scolded and educated about how disturbing the area may have affected the wildlife. They were apologetic and clearly sincere, but I was still distraught. It is common for owls to fall from trees when they're learning to fly, and it would be all too easy prey for someone's dog to tear apart. I had hope, but saw no signs over the next few days. A week later, I was trekking through the opposite end of the woods doing a floristic survey on an area I'd never been in. I heard a soft screeching noise and immediately recognized it as one of the adult owls. Great horned owls are pretty known for their stereotypical hoo-hoo sounds, but when resting in trees, they make softer screeching sounds. I looked up. First, I saw one of the parents, then the other. They were using the morning sun to keep themselves warm as they typically do. But then, 
High in an oak branch nearby, I saw one of the best things I had ever seen. All three babies had fledged and were sitting together at the other end of the forest, practicing their flight, the parents staying close by for support. I was able to snap a picture. Although the light was not ideal, it didn't lessen the impact of the moment. Victory for these little predators and solidifying the beneficial habitats my woodland had provided. Thanks for watching, and keep your eye out. If you find an animal in the wild, take a picture or a video and send it my way. You might just be featured on the next episode of Wildlife Weekly News. Get outside, hug a tree, and stay fresh, my friends. Wildlife Weekly News.